Hello, well, welcome to Life Hacks. Uh, I'm Joe Baines. I'm effortless biohacking and, and uh, effortless by Joe Baines. I'm a, basically a health coach, and what I who I have here is Klaus, who runs a podcast. And I see this guy. I, I've known him for many years. I see him as successful, very productive, and uh, very disciplined. And so those are the qualities I would like to incorporate from him into me. And so this podcast is to dig deep and find out what this guy does, how he does it, so that I can incorporate it in my life. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. So tell me about yourself. Yeah. Who are you? So yeah, my name is Klaus Geisendorfer. I um, live here in the UK since um, 11 years. And I'm really interested in um, how the human mind works into um, psychology, why we do what we do, how do we do it, and um, how to achieve our goals. And yeah, productivity is a big thing for me. Discipline, I think we can talk a little bit more about that. And yeah, I'm, I'm a podcaster. I have multiple podcasts. I have two German podcasts and one English podcast. And yeah, I just love sharing about um, the things I've learned along the way and help to make this world a better place. Brilliant. And, and tell me, how do you define success? What, what does success mean to you? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Excellent. Great question. So success, I think the, f the biggest lesson for me is to define success on my own levels and on my own term and don't define it based on what everybody else thinks success is. So um, what I've done in the past and what I usually do with my coaching clients is that I start with an exercise focusing on what are your core values. That where we, There are a lot of different ways to do it, different exercises. I think we've done it at Tony Robbins together. Um, one is to um, just take a list of um, adjectives and rank them to figure out what's important to you. But um, basically to, to cut the long story short, the first thing about success is figure out what you want and how you then can improve it. It's a two-step process. First of all, figure out what is important to you and then just optimize your life for that. So for me, for example, it's freedom. Freedom is one of my important areas. So I want to be um, free to work who, who, with whoever I want, where I want, when I want. And um, it, just has to feel, it just has to feel right. And if I feel like I can, I can do that, that's one way for me to dis define success. Success used to be monetary for me in my 20s, but that's gone. Mm -hmm. I just realized. You mentioned contribution as well. Yeah, and contribution is the second one, exactly. So um, making this world a better place is um, a second thing. Um, yeah, like I said, my 20s are more focused on making money. And I've done actually quite well. I got my MBA. Um, I started working as an IT and management consultant. Um, back then I lived in New York, my client was in um, Los Angeles, so every week I flew to LA, I got so many frequent flyer points, it was crazy, like free upgrades, nice rental cars, rental car upgrades, hotel upgrades, um, the, the lounges, free lounge passes, and honestly I wasn't happy. I had like all the luxury in the world, but I was really unhappy in my life, and now we're here at a festival outdoors, it's very basic, we're sleeping on on the ground basically with our sleeping bags and I'm so much more happy so <laughs> I think that was one lesson for me one important lesson money luxury actually doesn't make me happy I don't enjoy spending money like mm. I think some some women some of my female friends they're like <laughs> I feel a bit sad today let me go to the shop and buy some clothes I was like, that's not gonna make me happy <laughs> so speaking about success figure out what makes you happy and if it makes you happy to go spend hundred pound in a shop, then go do it. This is perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. You are beautiful and you're unique and whatever you're doing, however you define success is amazing. There's nothing wrong with it. For me, it is about contribution and about um, and growing and, and um, being free, having the freedom to grow. But it doesn't mean it has to be the same thing for you. Yeah, so I, mine parallels with you. I worked in the city. Yeah. Uh, and I was flying all over the place, business class, uh, staying in five-star hotels and all that. And even on holiday, because like, of my ex-wife, we used to stay in Marriott hotels. And I always found these play places dead. You know, like it doesn't matter how glamorous or, or whatever this five-star hotel is and what swimming pools it has. It was a dead place. 
But when I would travel on my own, or especially when I left my uh, wife, I now travel just by um, Airbnb, uh, wild camping. Yeah. Those places are alive. Like when I'm in a backpackers, I'm alive. The place is alive. In a hotel, you're a non-entity. You don't even exist. You're this robot. Yeah, so for me, yeah. So it's a massive difference between staying in a hotel and staying in a, a backpackers. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell me, uh, in, your, so in my life, I remember points in my life where I went, aha, there was like massive turning points, yeah. you know, like, like 9-11 was uh, for the rest of the world and, and America. But what are your like aha or pivotal points where, you know, shit hit the fan or you, you, yeah. got, you there was like, this is it, this made you and break, broke you, you know? Yeah, so. perfect. Um, so I think one, one big point for me was um, um, doing NLP and there's this amazing exercise we've done at NLP, which is called um, the map of the world. So um, just a bit of context for the audience. Um, Joe and I were at a festival here called the Sun and Moon Festival. And if we were both to draw a map of this festival, we would, let's say the toilets are here, then there's the workshop area, then we got the kitchen area, lots of different tents. And Joe would draw a map and I would draw a map, that map would be very different. And that's basically how people see the world. It's the world is not just one, there's not one reality, everybody has a different version of the world. And I think that realization for me that everybody has a different interpretation, different map, is one of my biggest things that I, that I learned. That was really a turning point for me. Actually, not so much about me personally, but me working with other people, me understanding my ex-wife better, understanding friends, family better, because I always thought, no, I'm right, this is the right thing, no, I'm correct, this is how I see the world, why are these idiots not seeing it? I was making them wrong. It's like, no, it's just their map looks a little bit different. It doesn't mean that my map is right and your map is wrong. It's just... We're both drawing and we don't have a GPS and a um, measuring device to measure exactly the distance from here to this tree to make it accurately. We're just guessing and estimating and approximating. And that's basically what life is about. And that has been my first big realization. And um, the second one is that um, you can manage your state and your energy. You can influence yourself. So... Um, I think the pivotal moment for me was a UPW, which we've done together, the Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within. And before that, I um, sometimes had energy and sometimes was happy and yeah, in a good mood. And then sometimes I wasn't and I couldn't really figure out when and why and how. But then doing Tony Robbins and I'm um, researching a little bit more about um, how the human body works and specifically the connection between, between your, your brain and your body, between your um, psychology and your, your physiology. And that really um, made a difference for me. So um, I think, let me give the audience an example. Um, there's a study done um, about um, people putting a, um, a pencil in their mouth and literally a pencil like that. <laughs> I know it looks super silly, but that's the idea. It's, it looks silly and um, have a smile on your, on your face. And they've done it in a um, psychiatry and um, they measured with a control group. And those people that had a pencil in their mouth were actually more happy and were um, doing much better with their treatment and progressing faster on their treatment plans. And it's just an amazing way to see that how your um, physiology can change your psychology. Um, another study which was done in Harvard with um, Professor Amy Cuddy, she's done the, the power posing where you stand like that um, before a job interview. And then um, the control group was asked to put the head down and do like a low power pose, like... <laughs> you get the point. And um, the uh, group that did the power posing was then um, ranked by the interviewers to be more qualified for the job, more confident, better knowledge, and like, they don't have better knowledge, the, uh, everything was the same, there was a control group to control for it, no, they were more confident, they were more um, self-assured about their ability so they could sell themselves better, and that's just when I realized, okay, actually, you know, I can change this, I can influence myself, 
and then doing Tony Robbins and coming up with specific things like I would put my hand on my heart to feel gratitude and I would think of something just take a deep breath in and I immediately become calm or take a deep breath into your belly just follow me now as you, if you want to, unless you're not driving which I hope you're not if you're watching a YouTube video just put your belly put your hand on your belly and take a deep breath in and slowly breathe out and another breath in hold it for a second and slowly breathe out and just doing that that simple simple exercise can change your psychology because you breathe slower your heart rate goes down uh, your stress levels go down and coming back to the study in harvard people were found after doing power posing that their cortisol level drops by 20 percent and their um, adrenaline is higher so that means they're more awake they're more confident and they're more able to do well in the job interview and I think that was the biggest realization for me and then incorporating that into my daily life like I said with practicing gratitude with doing power moves with being a um, move I have one move where I sh show about my um, confidence and certainty so let's say in the morning I'm strong I'm confident I'm beautiful like it's completely silly things right but this is a way I can change my energy I can put myself in a loving state by doing something silly like a, a kiss in the mirror and a grat in a state of gratitude in a in a state of um, confidence I can do um, the fe fearless one I'll just ask you to hold the micro this like I'm decisive I'm fearless so I would literally I'm decisive I'm fearless and I can have learned all of these things too. I can be whoever I want to be. I just need to change my my body and my mind follows. And that has been I think that's the number one thing that I've learned. It just makes me so yeah, so happy and so powerful and so so free. I mentioned about my values. I feel so liberated because I can change who I am in any instant, in any moment. And this is a wonderful gift that I would like to pass on to people, to your listeners and to the audience and really to the world. Brilliant, right? You mentioned uh, UPW. Yeah. Uh, during the first lockdown, I decided to do a challenge where was I uh, did the Tony Robbins Morning Power of Hour. Yeah. And I would uh, uh, Facebook stream it and Instagram stream it out, and so I did that like every single day. But I was for myself. I was doing it three times a day. So nice. three times uh, in the morning by twelve o'clock. I'd done three power of hours in wow. the kitchen. So we, we had a big kitchen and it'd be like a lot of shouting, a lot of jumping, a lot of dancing to very high music. And, you know, it was good. And I, I learned the, the words, you know, the Tony, I am, the, I am whatever it was. Yeah. But I learned those words and yeah. then I got to the point where I would say at the same time as Tony Robbins. Nice. I said, you know? I am the voice. Yes, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yes, I had it down to a tick. So yeah. I was saying it at the same time as Tony Robbins, exactly. Yeah. And when you do it at the same time, so it sort of they, it, they trigger something in your brain. Yeah. And yeah. I noticed, like, every single day I was doing three of these. By 12 o'clock, I'm shattered, by the way. Nice. nice. But every day I did it, it felt yeah. this, this improvement in me. Yeah. And so I did it for a month. It was amazing. I think I should do it again. You should. Ah, uh, yeah. I think that's also a form of conditioning. So you condition mm. yourself... So you can, again, it's a form of managing your state, managing your level. So if you've done, we learned it at UPW. So you go to UPW with like 8,000 people. You say, I am the voice. I'm a leader, not a follower. Yeah, I believe, I, say, I believe there's no doubt. I don't fear anything. So you have all of these words. So what you do, you say them a couple of times with 8,000 people. So all the energy and all the buzz is literally anchored in your brain. It's called anchoring or association. It's associated with those words. So if you want to recreate that energy, if you want to recreate that feeling, you'll just say the words. And again, simple psychology, your brain will remember those words and they're stored in that part of your brain together with the same feeling. So you can recreate that beautiful feeling. And it's just so amazing and so powerful to, to be able to do that. Mm. Just as you was talking there, I was thinking because we used to before lockdown run UPW uh, events oh, in yes. London. Yeah, we did. Mm. Yeah. 
And I was thinking, well, why am I, why are we not running it anymore? And the group I was doing it with, we've all gone our separate ways. But I'm like, but I'm still in central London. Yeah. I could still create another one. And then I was like, well, where would I hold it? Yeah. And I was like, well, I'd hire a room because I used to do it in my own house, but I don't have that anymore. Yeah. And then I thought, wait, wait, hang on, I don't need to hire a room. It's summer. Just do it in the park. Yeah. Just find like a secluded area in the park and exactly. we can do chanting, shouting. Yeah. The whole Tony Robbins, yeah. So I'm so when I get back, in fact today I'm gonna book it in. I'm gonna organize a UPW picnic. Let's do it. Um, where I'm, and I'll get a, I'll get somebody to bring like a big wireless speaker because I don't yeah. have one of those. And then we just pump the volume up. Awesome. And uh, we'll do yeah. I am the voice and the whole works. Yeah. Yes. So that's coming, people. Cool. High, five. Uh, <laughs> high five. So thank you for that. Awesome. Um, you mentioned, um, so you, so your biggest ones is freedom and contribution, yeah. right? Um, what is it? So what, so tell me about your morning routine yeah. and why? Yeah. What's your, what, what time do you wake up and why, what's your morning routine and why are you doing that? Got it. Yeah. So, um, I wake up usually around 5.30 AM. Mm. Um, I jump out of bed. I don't touch my phone. My phone is at flight on flight mode at night. And um, I try not to touch it. I usually jump out, take a cold shower, uh, have some coffee, then um, get dressed, take my coffee, go outside and do my um, my morning routine. So I do um, jumping jacks, um, my, my movements, gratitude. I would do the um, breathing one, if you could hold it. So the breathing one is like that. <laughs> Which basically means you put more oxygen into your um, blood. And you feel, I don't want to say you feel high, but you feel a bit, it, cha it does, again, it changes, your, um, it changes your, your, your chemical mixture. You have more oxygen in your blood, so you feel different, you feel better. And then immediately I do um, the gratitude, I put hands on my heart, and um, I practice gratitude. So it's a fairly short morning routine, I would say. Mm. And um, about once a week I listen to Tony's guided um, morning routine. And do that, and that's pretty much it. That's all I do. Yeah, uh, I, I, Tony's got this um, this routine called the the power questions. Yes. And it's, it's I think it's about seven questions, and it takes about thirty minutes to do. Yeah. And I remember some years ago, I actually did that. And the first week, I did these, and I would like you know it was almost like a meditation, and I'm listening to it, and I'm going through the questions, and it would take half an hour. And the first week, I didn't feel anything. Yeah. And I was like, I was just doing the motions. But the second week, oh my God, the emotions, I started to feel the emotions. And by the end of the second week, by the end of the 30 minutes, Tony Rhodes Power Hour, yeah. I felt, re I was like, wow. Like it was, it was almost like, uh, yeah, now, now because I, I, yeah. I stopped doing these things. And then when you, when you, when you were talking, you, you trigger these things in nice. me and you go, oh yeah, where? I used to do that and that was really good. Yeah. Why don't I do it anymore? Yeah. You know, like, and again, you mentioned the breathing. Every morning, I like it for months and months, I did uh, Wim Hof breath work. Nice. Yeah. And I used to do it intensely and so much that if I'd, uh, I'd do it in the kitchen standing and sometimes I'd fall over and it happened <laughs> a couple of times when I went boom. Wow. Um, so I learned that at what point I was going to pass out. And yeah. then as soon as that would happen, I'd lie down on the floor. Excellent. And so yeah. the rest of the time I'm standing up because I love to do the breathing standing up. But as soon as it went to my head, boom, I'd go down quickly, lie down until the feeling passed away and then stand up and carry on. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, yeah, I need to bring those back in. Yeah. Ah, that's, damn. yeah. So, so to, uh, yeah, so you study psychology. Yeah. Why did I stop doing them? That is a really good question. Yeah. Um, like they were so good. Okay, so I, I'll answer honestly. Um, I, I don't think I'll be anybody's able to answer that question. I think the human mind is so complex. A, a simple question like why is somebody doing X is impossible to answer. Um, I, would, I feel like the more I study about psychology, sociology, NLP, the more I realize that I don't know anything. It's just such a vast, vast system. Um, so I, we both work in IT, so we can use IT as an example. I look at the, um, let's say, the Google search algorithm. The Google search algorithm has 
hundreds and hundreds of attributes. It looks at um, the words that you search, search, it looks at the time, your location, it compares your entire profile history. What have you searched for in the, in the past? How old are you? What are the words you're looking for? How are they connected? It's just such a complex algorithm. And then you have Google AdWords on top of it who tries to match these two, two ads. And it's just, when you just think of the system in, in, in engineering terms, it's so complex. And when I compare that to the human mind, it's like, the human mind is a million times more complex. When you're trying to find a bug in the Google search algorithm, let's say you search for cats and dogs come up. It's like, I don't know, it can be the image recognition, it can be spelling, it can be language, because I'm searching in German, like it's so many factors. So I think it's really impossible to say why. Um, I think the better question is how. And that's also something I think we've both learned at Tony Robbins. And it's coming actually back to your question earlier, that made a major difference in my life. Um, what Tony is saying is, the, the was it the if the quality of your questions improve, the quality of your answers improve. So asking a question like, why did I not do something? A, you focus on the past and you focus on something negative. So where your focus goes, your energy flows. If you use a why question, your energy flows on problem solving. What was the problem? If you if you use a how question. How can you do it? How can you improve it in the future? How can I succeed for 30 days to do it? That's the better way to ask questions because then you direct your energy into a solution. So it's problem thinking versus solution thinking. And that's one thing I do in coaching in my podcast as well, trying to shift people's attention and also challenge people. Like you asked me a question, actually, I challenged you a bit. I'm like, actually, I don't think it's a better, que good question. I think they're smarter, better questions to ask. To again to change your thinking and and change your focus on on the solution. Ah, okay. So so my question then would be, <laughs> uh, how can I yeah have a three hour morning routine yeah an awesome morning routine that I stick to for ninety days yeah like every single day. I want to wake up at five yeah and as soon as I wake up, have a shower, go to the toilet, whatever yeah. it is. But at five thirty. I start, yeah. and for the next three hours, I've created this morning routine. Yeah. I want to execute like yeah. a robot, nice. like a like a like a master Zen master, yeah. and I want to do it for ninety days, every single day. Yeah. How do I do that? That's my thing. Okay, right, so I'll, I'll answer the the question in two parts. I think that the first part is. Um, I would probably go back and so we can do a little coaching session. Yeah. Has there been a time where you have been successful in doing a ninety day challenge? I, I've been successful in I've been successful in doing thirty day challenges. Yeah. Uh, where I've done like the Tony Robbins thing where I did yeah. it three times a day with an hour's break in yeah. between. Uh, I've also done uh, seven days where I was doing five hours of yoga every single day. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, or by day seven my body went now nah, you're not doing this um yeah. but so my three-hour yoga routine would include me lying down would yeah. include me doing some breath work would include me doing some yoga would in include me jumping up yeah. and down uh it would include uh breath work and then a meditation yeah. several medit so it wouldn't be just physical activity yeah it'll just be three hours of you know half an hour of, of power questions Half yeah. an hour, Tony Robbins, I am the voice. Nice. Uh, an hour's yoga, an hour's yeah. meditation. So it's not like I'll be yeah. do, 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 going going for three yeah. hours, but I want it regimented. 90, 90 days. Yeah, yeah, 90 days regimented. Right, I get up. Here's, yeah. here's the structure. A, yeah. 10 minutes. B, yeah. 20 minutes. You which, know, which, and just execute. I get it, which is actually quite funny. So there's, there's a big overlap, I think, between Joe's and my life. So... Um, I've been a guy who, so I'll answer your question, but I'll, I'll give you the backstory. So I started, um, 2008, I started my first startup and it was not very successful. And basically for the last uh, 11 years, I um, started doing um, different kind of startups and nothing has succeeded. Well, no, 12 years actually, 12 years. Nothing has ever succeeded. I am lost a lot of money. I learned a lot. That's a good thing. And I think my biggest challenge was that I would give up too easily. So this 90-day thing, I'm not sure I'm the best person to give you advice on that. But um, I think there are two, three things I learned along the way. One is um, self-acceptance and self-love. And if you're a person who 
cannot stick to a 90 day challenge, but you can stick to a 30 day challenge. Don't make yourself wrong for it. Like I know Joe, your lifestyle, your, the way you prioritize health, personal growth, contribution, creating amazing content here. You're in the top one, 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 one percent, zero point one percent. Seriously. Like, I think at some point it's also time to like celebrate and have this gratitude and the self love. And again, if you, I do it all the time. Just if you want to do it, Joe, in the audience, put your heart. It's like, I'm an amazing, beautiful person. I'm, I'm an amazing, beautiful person. I'm doing really, really well. I'm doing really, really well. I'm unique. I'm unique. I'm special. I am special. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. Awesome. Cool. Mm. Yeah. So if you do, I don't know. 12, 30 day challenges in a year, I think you're smashing personal development, smashing personal growth. And um, from being, going through a divorce with, and um, having now done coaching and, and psychology for a long time, I just don't think you can change who you are completely. So if you're a person who is more um, driven by short term goals, 30 day goals, similar with me, I'm more driven by short term goals, then I don't think it's easy for you to become, or even possible, to become this long-term person who sticking to goals for 60, 90, 80, 100 years. But do you need to? Is there really a need for you to do it? So I, I've done a, I've done, so I'm a biohacker. So I've done a lot of experiments on myself, like a lot. And what I've noticed, I've, I've been doing these experiments on me, is if I do something every single day for a week, yeah. I get this momentum from it. Yeah. But if I, as soon as I stop at the end of that week, within a couple of days, I've lost that, yeah. that benefit from it. And if I do it for a month, I get this build up. So every yeah. day it's like a 1% better than I was yesterday and that yeah. 1% and it keeps going. And at the end of the third, if I stop doing it, it lasts for a one or two weeks, the effects. Okay, and, it goes yeah? and then it sort of disappears. Yeah. But what I've noticed, and I've done this in my, in, in my past, if I do something for three to six months, every single day yeah. and then I stop doing it, the benefits from it, I can feel them permanently. They just uh, stay I with me. It. Yeah. It's like a, a massive shift. I don't know. I, I don't understand the, the mechanics behind it, yeah. but I have done some things for 30 days, I mean, for 90 days and I've done for six months. And when I yeah. stopped doing them at the end of the, I mean, I've not done them for years now, these things, but when I stopped at the end of the six months, it was permanent. It was yeah. like it was now integrated into my core and I never have to do those exercises again, but the benefits are permanent. Nice. And it's, it's, in, it's insane, you know, like the stuff I've done yeah. for 60 days, uh, not 60 days, for like six months. And like I could be lazy as hell for the rest of my life, but those <laughs> benefits stay Interesting, permanently. Yeah. So yeah. that's the reason for the 90 days. Oh, is that if I, I can hold but something for 90 days. But I think, again, this works for you. And I think that's really critical for the audience. So this is the very first thing I said is figure out what is important to you. How do you work? What are your values? Are you more like a short-term person who has 30 days? Are you more like a 90-day person? Or are you more like a two, two years person? So I, I just realized I'm more like a short-term person. I like short-term goals and quick actions and um, fairly quick results. And yeah, like I said, I did 10 years... 12 years of unsuccessful startups and in these in this more than a decade um, a good friend of mine who is an accountant who's my accountant very very successful business guy he has an accountancy he uh, has multiple um, those bubble tea shops in london he's a shop owner he has a small chain now i mean his turnover is in the millions and he and he he told me klaus you can be successful in anything in your life you just need to stick to one thing and don't move sway change all the time and I realized, yeah, he's right. He, he is right. I need to just persevere and stick to one thing. And um, I think in, in a couple of years later, I had a, um, I had a big of a downturn. I was a bit, um, yeah, on a downhill um, journey because I realized that I've done startups now for more than 10 years and nothing has worked out. And then I was like, screw that. I'm not going to start my own business. I just want to make this world a better place. So I'm, my, my mission, my purpose now is to create as much content as possible and just create amazing content for people about, like I said, spirituality, personal growth, and how to manage your life and how to manage your state 
purposefully and how to design an amazing life that works for you. Because again, remember, you're unique, you're special, you're different than Joe, you're different than me. Joe is different from me, but it doesn't matter, but figure out who you are. So again, for me, it is lots of short-term projects. So the way I designed my life now is that I would do, let's say one month, I focus on podcasting, I record 10 episodes for my big flagship podcast and for a small podcast where I do t um, three days a week Monday Wednesday Friday a little short story it's like three four minutes I can easily record 20 in a day so I take a week or so I record 40 50 I'm my virtual assistant she then um, schedules it for the rest of the month she does the episode cover she uploads it she does everything and so that's one project I do and then, if I'm a little bit bored of podcasting, I go um, to my virtual assistant business. So I run a small virtual assistant business now, where I, um, I've become yeah, very good at setting up processes and procedures and structures. And I have a very um, good and rigid process for hiring virtual assistants. And We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that as well. Offline. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so um, and my friend asked me, Klaus, you're so organized you got to figure out, can you teach me? I was like, yeah, I can teach you, but I'm not sure you have the time and I have the time. I was like, yeah, what should we do? I was like, actually, you can just use my VA, why not? And from that, I've actually started a little um, side business now where I um, use the um, people that I have hired. I've trained them and I think I can be a bit of a tough boss, <laughs> which on the other hand means that the people working for me, they are very, very high quality. And... Um, for the audience, for example, if you are working on a podcast, if you're working on a YouTube, online social media, um, you can reach out to me and I can um, pass on my VA services. It's starting at around um, $8 an hour for a highly, highly okay, German-trained virtual assistant based offshore, obviously. So um, just coming back to the story. So one month I do podcasting. Then maybe I take a week where I focus on my virtual assistant business or figure out my pricing model. I set up a... Oh, th this is so brilliant. This is so cool. <laughs> so my virtual assistant, she um, writes down the hours she works for Reiner, my, uh, my German friend. And then she would literally create the invoice. She has an... I have a separate email address which I gave her where she has access to, which is Klaus Geisendorfer. She would then send the invo her own invoice <laughs> to, the, to my customer. Who would then transfer me the money? I don't have to touch anything. I don't have to do it. I just set up once to set up this process. But then this works for me because I like setting up processes, doing things once time or occasionally, and then have it working in the background. So I have that working. And then if I'm sick of that, I write a couple of blog posts. I started doing podcasts. Pod, um, sorry. I started writing blog posts. Um, I've contributed to a book on um, mental health and um, more like the the thoughts aspect, how to calm down your, your monkey brain. So I've done that and I just designed my life around doing a couple of small, medium-sized projects. But then going back, so I go back to podcasting in three months. I'm still having this continuity, but then it works for my life because I have different projects. And the same with personal development. I would do the um, Tony Robbins morning routine for a couple of weeks. And honestly, I get bored of Tony. I need something yeah. new. Yeah, so do Wim Hof for a little bit. Mm -hmm. and then, but I come back to Tony. I come back to Wim Hof. Oh, then I do yeah. more gratitude. Then I do more meditation. But I can't really do meditation for long. I do it for one or two weeks. And then I do something else. And that's, again, it's about self-love. Don't make yourself wrong. If you're not able to do a 90-day challenge, if you're not able to succeed with meditation, you're a beautiful person. You're amazing. And loving yourself is probably one of the most important things. If you don't love yourself, if you're not content and happy with who you are, nobody will love you. Nobody will be happy with you or your work. And just accepting you for who you are and then once you have that acceptance, designing your life around it to make it perfect. Mm. So, so you, you, you mentioned it earlier that about the, the one thing, focus on one thing. Yeah. So what is it in your whole life that you focus on? This, what is this one thing and why? To be honest, I think it has changed a little bit over the time. So, um, so I'll use my life, but I try to extrapolate it for the audience to make it interesting. I think in your in my twenties and in your twenties, it's it's about finishing university and learning and learning about who you are. 
And back in the olden days, let's say with 26, 27, you finished your university or if you if you don't go to uni, you have already been working for a couple of years and you're usually in your job and like, eh, let's say end of 20s, you figure out who you are and what you want to do. But I don't think that's true anymore. I think your, your 30s are the new 20s. In your 30s, you figure out what's important to you and that's what happened to me. In my um, late 30s, I figured out what do I want to do and... Um, what can I do? What makes me happy? Figuring out my values. Tony Robbins. I think I was 36 when I did that. So in your in your 30s, really invest. Try things. It's try and error. Same with my startups, um, with with personal development. Not everything works for you, but in your 30s, try out as much as possible. Try things, and then once you found it, and like I said, I found mine now, which is creating content, sharing amazing content, and making this world a better place. Then the next decades, the next 10 years, and I would always think in like 10 year steps, that works quite well for me. The next years is in like training, learning, learning, like honing down on this one or two or three skills. And for me, like I said, it's podcasting, it's writing and setting up processes and structures to have a life where I don't need to be doing the manual chores of other people to do it. And like I said, happy to rent out those services as well. So in those 10 years, you just do lots of workshops like we did today, we did yesterday, creative writing, um, improvisation, um, speaker classes, and it's just learning, learning, learning. And then after this 10 years over, it start to, it's time to harvest the results. So then you can start thinking about growing financially. Um, I think I can also tell I'm, I'm getting a little bit older, so maybe slowing down is an important thing that I want to focus on taking, um, coming back to the self-love and loving myself and also purposely reducing energy and, re and, and taking a little bit of heat off because um, what I realized, um, if I just keep go, 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 I get up, I do Tony Robbins, I push myself, jumping jacks, cold shower, go back, have coffee, go work, work on my standing desk, I get tired, I work on my sitting desk, just go, go, go for 14, 15 hours. I can do it for a couple of weeks. I can do it for a couple of months. But then I crash, and I rip crash really, really badly earlier this year. Um, it's 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 basically like taking like taking drugs, like taking LSD or probably MDMA is the best one to compare it to. So um, what I did, I just pushed myself and had this feeling of amazing and and love and joy and contributing to the world. And then I want to grow and do even more and help even more people. And I was I was high. I was literally feeling this sense of excitement and and rush and like i didn't take any drugs it was just my own body produced those drugs and produced um adrenaline oxytocin and at some point the storage was just empty like when you take mdma you have a hangover you have a come down i had a come down from my own rush so i was like i was tired i was literally empty and dead inside i didn't have any goals i didn't work on my podcast i didn't I mean, luckily, my VA was just running. She literally ran the show for like a month or so. I was just sitting at home, lying on my couch, watching stupid Netflix, binge watching for like a month or so, over a month. And I realized that I'm getting older now and I don't have the energy of a 20-year-old more. So coming back to your question, what's important? the one thing that is important is figure out where in the stage of your life, in your life cycle you are, and then optimize your life for that. And I realized that I need to have a very balanced approach to my energy level now. So I purposely, like I said, I take deep breath. I don't work. I take my phone off. I just take a book. I go to a workshop. I go hiking. I go in nature for like a few days. Um, one of the favorite things I like doing is sailing. I've been sailing in the summer. Um, and we sailed from um, Menorca to mainland Spain. And there's no service. There's nothing around us. Just water. And then the wind was gone and just imagine just close your eyes for a moment just think about it. it's a completely flat sea there's a sun there's not a single cloud and not a single boat around us just this vast vastness and emptiness and that emptiness helped me to slow down and to become calm and take that break that i needed because there was no phone around no computer nothing to manage nothing to do and now um i want to design my life more purposely and i purposely put in those breaks to have my um, oxytocin level be reset, my cortisol level to go down again because it's a bit stressful if you're constantly working. To have my uh, 
adrenaline level to reset a little bit and I think that's really, really important in your, your 40s and 50s and 60s that you focus on um, that balanced approach. So yeah, so, so to answer your question, figure out at which stage of your life you are and then optimize for that stage of your life. Oh, nice. And, and you, you were talking about your virtual uh, assistant business. Now, if somebody was to come to you and they'd look, I'd like a virtual assistant, what are the steps? What does it look like? And what should they be doing yeah. uh, to optimize? you know, their virtual assistant experience? That, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. I think the, 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 by far the most important thing is to write down all your processes and your structures. So honestly, I don't have a lot of clients. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because most people don't have the experience and managerial skills to work with a virtual assistant. Um, so I have the, uh, the I think, I guess the luck and the advantage that I have been working in IT as an IT project manager pretty much for 15 years. And um, as part of that, I'm very much used to structuring processes, writing everything down. We work a lot with offshore, with, with um, we basically, my, um, my company does outsourcing to India. So we write down processes and we outsource them to India. Um, and that's the that's the one step and that's the one prerequisite that you need to write down all of your processes they need to be written they need to be you can do videos and you can do a screen share you can do a screen share record a video upload in youtube audio doesn't really work that well because it's better to show it but having those set procedures let's say my podcast i literally have a um i have a um what's it called a standing operating procedure it's about um Two weeks before the release date, I um, send instructions to my virtual assistant. She creates the logo. She does the cutting, the editing. She uploads. It's just a step-by-step -step process. It's written down in a Google Doc, doc and she just needs to execute those steps. And if you don't have those written procedures written down, you're just going to be messaging back and forth with the virtual assistant and won't be very effective. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, because I had that. Cause I That's right. Because I've just had my website built. Um, and uh, yeah, the instruction I gave him is make it look cool. <laughs> I was like, well, what do you want in it? I just said, look, here's my uh, URLs. Bring them into the uh, into the yeah. uh, into the thing and make it look cool. However, that is. Yeah. And so I, I wouldn't yeah. be working with you. So this is yeah. <laughs> this is one. Actually, my virtual assistants they really like working with me because I'm. I think I'm a tough boss, but I'm also a. Um, I'm also tough with my clients. I was like, yeah. no, Joe, sorry, it's not going to work for me. I have a guy who does websites, but I wouldn't want to work with you because let's say we design a website, we agree on, I don't know, $500 and we finish everything and you look at it it's like, no, that's not how I like it. Like, we didn't really agree on what you like. You just told me a bunch of things. So that's when you set up your processes, your structures, your requirements from before. And then you have a goal. You can say, yes, these are the requirements. And you didn't tell us you like orange. You just said, choose a funky color. And I think purple is funky. Yeah, and I, I gave him colors. <laughs> he gave, gave him, him colors. He gave yeah. him the colors. I've got two colors, like orange and green. And I said, make, you know, yeah. those are my favorite colors. And I like that. Yeah. He did reflect that in the website. Perfect. Actually, he did a really good job. So nice. Yeah. And so I think that's the, the second thing that I do is I combine the um, the life coaching with the virtual assistant service. So there are basically two packages. There's a, you, get a, you get a VA, it's $8 an hour, you send her the task, it's done, it's very transactional. Here's a list of tasks, she executes them for you. And yes, you can obviously communicate with the VA, ask questions, but it's a very, very structured process. The other hand is um, you're not quite there yet, you might need some help holding, um, hold hand-holding to refine your standard operating procedures, maybe a bit of coaching and mentoring and guidance around that. I offer some consulting packages and some coaching packages where I can coach you on how to become structured. I can coach you on how, how to write down your standard operating procedures. And SOPs, that's what makes McDonald's successful. We're not just talking about a bunch of guys here in the garage. And like McDonald's is the leading example of standard operating procedures like when flipping burgers they have everything figured out the temperature the distance from the fridge to the grill to the packing station it's like it's like this beautiful well-oiled machine it just works so amazingly well because they have their procedures perfected honestly i i used to work at mcdonald's yeah. i worked for five years and i used to be one of their trainers nice yes. so you, exa you exactly know yeah. what i'm talking so about their procedures yeah like every little the, bit you could the, give it a monkey the food is shit yeah the food is unhealthy 
the branding is shit. Yeah. The only thing they're really good at is their standard operating procedures. And they've got a standard operating procedure for every little thing. Like salting the fries, <laughs> it's crazy. Smiling, there's, a, there's one for that. Exactly. And my job used to be for several years was to teach new students coming yeah. into, uh, into McDonald's. McDonald's is a high turnover staff, yeah. understandably. Yeah. And but we can train people up like within days. It is, exactly. Seriously, I copy so much from McDonald's. The same with my virtual assistant. I have a, um, I don't have a huge turnover, but I have a need to hire quickly. If I get two, three clients, like if you, a couple of people are watching it now, they're like, okay, that sounds interesting. Let me check it out. Let me try it out for a couple of months. If I get 10 people coming to me now, I'm not a big business. I don't have the capacity, but I set up the structures to hire people quickly. So I have test, pre-written test tasks. Let's say I want to hire one VA. I usually send out a test task to five guys. Actually, I don't do it. My VA does it. She has access to my Upwork account. She would then send out the test task. She would do the first review. And if it's good, she would send it to me for a second review. So the hiring is standardized. Even the termination is standardized. If somebody not doing well, there's a strike, there's a conversation. If she's being ter if they are being terminated, my virtual assistant would first um, end their contract, remove the access to important um, documents like my passports for social media accounts. Like it's all structured, structured, structured. Ah. And this structure I can teach you, and this structure is something you offer as part of my services. That, that yeah, that, that's my question, right? So uh, I have two tasks that take up a lot of time. Okay, but that can be easily automated. Oh, the first yeah. one is I create events on Eventbrite and funds yeah. and Airbnb. What I'd like a VA to do is now take those URLs, take those tasks, yeah. those uh, events, and then market them out there. Out there, put them yeah. on social media. Uh, you know, like in some way market them. In some way push yeah. them out in whatever form, whereas SEO, Google AdWords, or um, you know, creating Facebook um, yeah. paid ads or Instagram, whatever it is, any of that. That's what that's. Uh, I want. I would love. I want to hire a PVA yeah. to do just that. So, so I go. Can, here's can my I, event. Can yes. I interrupt yep. you? Yep. So, so that's not a VA. What you're searching for? You right. no. It's more like a marketing assistant, like a marketing expert. Because a VA, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, it's you hire somebody um, who is very good at executing a pre-written list of steps, but. Um, they are also fairly um, basic employees. I, I, I'm just trying to be honest here. Like, it's a um, if you want to hire a marketing expert, you're probably not going to find somebody for seven, eight dollars an hour. And you need to pay a little bit more. So, what you're looking for is a bit of that creative input yes. and the solutioning. Like, what structure do I post on Facebook, Instagram? I mean, if you give somebody like a 20 year old kid in the Philippines this question, should should I use SEO or social media management marketing? Should I do um, Google AdWords, should I do LinkedIn, should I do Instagram posts, Facebook ads, um, should I post on Eventbrite? Like, they're completely overwhelmed. They don't know. We're sitting in the UK now. They don't know how to market the events. So you need to either work with friends, come up with your own process and say, okay, so I, I can give you an example, for example. So let's say um, what you can do is you have um, one event that you do four times a year. So then every three months it's the same event so she can reuse or they can reuse the uh, same data and say hey, yeah. every three months you post in these i don't know, find 10 facebook groups related to social to um health wellness and um, so, biohacking so if i created a yeah. standard operating procedure yes. for mark because i can create one of those yeah exactly and then it'll, it'll be like two pages yeah and it'd be like do this do this do exactly. this do this do this do it every yeah. quarter all and right you just change the text so let's say one day you do a workshop on biohacking the other one in yoga you just give her a different text but the steps are the same yeah go to facebook find 10 um facebook groups on uh, yoga yeah and um meditation <laughs> thank you <laughs> we're having some um a young contributor here <laughs> who helping us to make this show even more um real and and, yeah. and spontaneous and, and prompt so around, yeah. Yeah. yeah so coming back to the structure you would say um find 10 facebook groups and then you post in those groups, you review the posts, and then um, some po some groups are just not really valuable, so you leave the groups again, and um, you execute that, and you measure and you see how it works, and um, then they can just repeat that task all the time. Ah, nice. See, I can create that. And the other requirement I have okay. is, uh, like, for example, I'm at Sun and Moon here, and I'm running workshops here. Yeah. And... It, 
finding all the festivals, all these kind of uh, retreats, uh, places where I could go and do a workshop is quite time consuming. But it can be done, you know, online uh, where you just do lots of Google searches and all kinds of stuff yeah. and, and in Facebook groups and all that. So what I want to do is hire somebody who goes and finds these places for me yeah. uh, and, then, and then contacts them on my behalf yeah. and then books me in. That is, that is a brilliant task. I think that's much easier than the second one yeah. because it's very clearly defined. So ah. he, we'll just talk it through. Here's yeah. how I do it. I would first of all create a Google spreadsheet. So this is the first step usually. I create a Google spreadsheet and a Google Doc. In the spreadsheet, I add the columns that I would like to know. So I would like to know the, the venue, um, the date it is, the location, and let's say the content, the, 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 the topic, what's, what it is. So sun and moon... I don't really know what is about the stars and the moon. It's about health and well-being and yoga and meditation. Really healthy, yeah. So I have a little description. So I would have four fields. So I would define the type, how she should collect the data, the MVA. And then I would give a, um, let's say, find events within, um, let's say, in the UK or within Europe as well, but yeah. not in Eastern Europe. So be very, very clear with your definition. And then go and find, um, I don't know, 20 events or so. And then they would find the 20 events. Then I would review the Google um, spreadsheet. And in the Google Doc, I would say the steps. Find the event, write it down. Here's what the columns mean. And then we take a break. So she, let's say she searches for 10. I review 10. In, all, in the Google spreadsheet, I then add another um, column, which I call comments. So let's say in row number two, it's the, I don't know, we, we don't like biohacking group. And I'm like, tell her no. This is not a good group. This is not a good festival for us. And delete that and don't find any more festivals which are negative about biohacking because that's something that's important to me. So it gives her live feedback. Then she can refine her process and find better events. Then once we found the events that are good, the second step is then to give her a template. So you say, um, my name is Joe Baines. You need to pre-write it. They don't have yeah, the yeah, skills yeah. to write you. You yeah. pre-write the template and you just leave some, some variables like in IT. You, the yeah. variable is the event name. How much I would really come to the XYZ variable. And then UVA can just copy and paste sun and moon. They cannot do any mistakes. Like obviously the English is not perfect. They will write grammar. They will make grammar and spelling mistakes. But if you give them a template and just let them change the first name, dear organizer and just change a bit of pieces that's something so structured and so organized and she can then um send it out oh brilliant all right well that's it so that's that that's yeah. that, that's a good one to start with that's super simple yeah Definitely okay much easier than the i'll create because i've done that for myself yeah. it just takes a lot of time yeah uh and a lot of effort googling yeah. and all that kind of stuff yeah so okay so that that's what we can work on that one yeah. um you tell me what i need to create i'll go yeah. off and create it and uh, yeah i can create the um uh, the 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 letters and then exactly. and the links and yeah. the videos behind it. Um, I'll create a video of uh, me letting the whoever the organizer know. Look, yeah. this is what I do, nice. and the, exactly. you know all that kind yeah. of stuff. Because I love doing videos, so yeah. I'll and do just that. Upload it on YouTube and have it there, so it's one yes. time you do it, and you, you can just read yeah, it. yeah, yeah. That's like right. I'll put it on video. YouTube, yeah. and then and that'll be in my letter as well. Yeah, saying here's a bit explaining about myself. Yeah, here's all the links of all my previous events. Exactly, and all that kind of stuff. So I'll create that template. And then your virtual assistant can then yeah. do the donkey work exactly. of finding these 20, 30 events yeah. around the you UK. You got yeah. you spot on. Okay. It's about templatizing, like yeah. templates, structurizing, documenting. Okay, cool. Well, when I come back from this festival, we'll start that. Let's start it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's Brilliant. Start it. Yeah. Cool. That's it. You see, this yeah. is how this is how business gets done. Exactly. You know? I think so. that's one more thing we learned from Tony Robbins. Never leave a place of decision making without taking any action so yeah. now we made an act yeah the action is we That's have a it. plan we'll execute it now it's it's not just talk right we're, yeah yeah we yeah, have yeah, to yeah. Do yeah. Stuff. yes yeah i think that's real that's another lesson of just so so important just don't sit there talking dreaming fantasize no execute. ideas are worthless let me just yeah. tell you that guys ideas yeah. are worthless it's about execution 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 and most startups i don't know airbnb twitter like twitter is a cool one so twitter used to be what did they work for? Like a gambling or some kind of company a couple of um, guys worked for. And um, they used emails and didn't really have a good messaging system. And it was back in the days when um, 
SMS were still limited to 160 characters. So they were like, you know, can we just use an internal messaging system with less than 160 characters? Like, hey, are you deploying code to server S? Yeah, I'm deploying it to server S. Is server B down? Yeah, no, you need to use the UAT environment first. Like, it's really quick messages. So you just focus on the conversation. And that messaging tool was so good. The other startup was shit. It didn't work out, but the messaging tool was so good. They're like, actually, we should open up to the world. That's how Twitter was born, completely random. But they they executed, they liked the idea, and they just kept on going with it. There was no plan behind it. It was not like this was a great plan. It was like the idea was, the original idea was worthless, but the idea was, well, it was never idea, it became the product, which is now Twitter, a humongous, humongous social media platform. Ah, all right. And then now the final question is, <laughs> if you could send a message to your 20-year-old self yeah. saying, look, do these three things or these three things are important or whatever it is, yeah. what three things, three things. would you, yeah. ideas, whatever it is, you yeah. want to get across to your 20-year-old yeah. self? I think the first one is just be ballsy, be really ballsy and confident. Just go for it, listen to your gut and just go for it. I think I was really, I was really timid when I was young, especially as a child, but even as a young adult, unsure, nervous. I think one time I had this like twitching in my eyes where I was stressed and nervous. I was like, no, just go for it, go for it. So I think that's the first one, be confident and ballsy and just go for it. <laughs> and the second one with that very, very close link is listen to your gut. I think a lot of times it just, if it feels right, it's probably the right thing to do. I, I think we overanalyze too much. I overanalyze too much, asking why, why did they do that? Why is this happening? No, it doesn't matter. It's too complicated. Nobody knows. The human mind is way too complex. Just listen, listen to your gut, listen to your instinct. And actually, I remember I was reading a book on uh, decision making and they had an example of um, a um, statue from Greece. And it was this beautiful statue. It looked amazing. And they brought a couple of um, um, people in to um, authenticate it. And everybody said, yeah, no, it's authentic. The um, x-ray test we've done and all the scientific analysis they've done. And the guy walked in and he was like, also an expert. He looked at it and like, something looks wrong. My gut just tells me it's... it's I know I look at all the reports. and I know on an on a analytical, conscious rational level this is completely good but something just looks wrong and he was right at the end he was right it was something about the color that was off the way it was reflecting but his gut so you just imagine your brain is so complicated and you have millions of millions of things that influence you in your decision making and i'm sure most of you know the the iceberg example you have a bit on the top of the iceberg that's your conscious mind and you have 95% on the bottom, your subconscious. And that's where all the decision making happens under the water. You don't know what is happening. So it's no question to ask why, because the answer is not available to you anyways. But your gut, your brain, you just instinctively know what's the right thing. So listen to your gut, love yourself, and then just go fucking do it. I think it's only two, but they're so important. They're so closely linked. Be confident, listen to your gut, and just go and do it. Yeah, that, that listening to your gut, that is so powerful because I've spent most of my life not yeah. listening to my intuition and it has caused me massive pain, massive pain, you know, like insane amounts. And so now whenever my intuition goes uh, this, I'm like, all right, I'm listening. Exactly. Don't, don't hit me with a hammer. Don't, don't hit me. Yeah. Don't analyze yeah. it. Just yeah. go and do it. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't hit me with a train, whatever you're going to yeah. do. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So like now I'm almost yeah. uh, almost like for a while, I was almost paranoid. Like as soon as, as, soon as my yeah. intuition said, oh, do this or don't do this. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a good boss. Yeah. Because <laughs> it has hit me hard. Like yeah. my marriage, for example. Even before I got married, my intuition was firing on all fill in cylinders going, do not do this. Wow. At the, at during the marriage, my instinct was going, do not go through with this. this. And I, but I ignored all of it because the sex was good. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, after the marriage, my instinct was a, a, on you know, level 15 out of 10. You're going, yeah. what the hell have you done? Get out of this. You know? like, yeah. And like for uh, many years after I left my wife, like I had this, this fantasy that I was going to invent a time machine. Yeah. Then I was going to go to myself, 
before I got married nice. and uh, or when I'm married, like even a couple of weeks and go, look, put a gun to my head and go, look, <laughs> this is going to cause you a lot of pain. To, to yeah. your head, not to, to my myself. head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is going to cause you a lot of pain and you're going to cause me a lot of pain. So if you, I'm going to come back in a week. If you're not divorced, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and so you've got a week to get out of this marriage. That that, that's literally, I wanted to literally invent a time machine just to do awesome. that. Awesome. So, yeah. So, thank you very much. Cool. Is there any last words? Yeah, no, I would like to give one last um, yeah. final yeah. word to the audience, which is um, you're unique, you're special, you're amazing at who you are, and just keep that in mind again. Put your hand on your heart and just think about how special you are. Um, if you um, yeah, listen to your gut, if you're looking for coaching services or VA, then you can always contact me. But if you don't, then that's fine too. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing something. There's nothing right. It's just, it needs to feel good to you. And remember to have the self love and just to be kind to yourself and love yourself. All the best. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So I'll put the links to uh, his coaching business uh, below and, uh, and I'm going to be hiring him and we will go through awesome. what, what I need to do to get, uh, to get him to get his VAs to execute on, um, on booking me for other festivals. Because this is a bit amazing. Like I'm, yeah. I'm working here. I'm uh, having a great time. I'm, I'm telling lots of workshops. I'm sparked and I feel it's amazing. So, I mean, I'd like to do another 10 of these, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. Remember, action matters more than words. Yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you very much.